Hello everyone. I'm just waiting on Patrick to come in. We almost had a fire alarm in my building, which was uh, quite unfortunate, but uh, he's about 10 seconds away. So I'm just going to, we'll, we'll start in about, uh, uh, in about a minute or so. And we are live. Thank you. I can't believe you're late, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> Misjudged the distance between Ivan's office and where I was. And and the other thing is, I also can't really start because I don't know the uh, the general advice warning quite as well oh, as you yeah. do. Any of us can change this presentation generally. It doesn't take into consideration your personal circumstances. You need to decide whether it's appropriate for you. Past returns are not an accurate indicator of future returns, and stuff options are risky. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Check the PDS. Cool. Breakout today are here. Uh, it kind of failed, uh, um, but uh, you know it uh, banged its head against there. So we, you know, with that that's an interesting level. Uh, I was just reading off the email that you the guys email. sent out. Yeah. Break out or is it a fake out? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I saw I saw the headline, so yeah. it's just okay. I thought it was facetious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, that's that. Um, uh, I'm just going to uh, press the chart details. So if you ever wanted to go on and hide that box, by the way, with the detail or keep it just. Chart, type in chart detail. Mm -hmm. um, so what do we got? So 71.44 was a high, 71.45. So we actually did have a breakout. Mm. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. For a good. millisecond. For a millisecond, yeah. yeah. Good. And it's failed. And now it's creeping back down. So it'd be interesting. I think um, what I'm, I've been looking at, I may have missed my opportunity to price it um, perfectly, uh, would be uh, a long straddle. So yeah. we can maybe go and have a look at that. And you've I done think, you've done two of these now, haven't you? Oh, recently, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and both were, were both, good. Both are fine. Um, yeah. It, it's yeah. It's a. Well, I guess we can we can price it up and have a look at. Yeah, it I think we should. I think the cause... motivation behind doing it now. But what I would mind also to do is goes to the trading scans. So yeah. There's okay. some some trades that have lined up, and if anyone else has got any trades, they want to have a look at. Uh, if you've gone to one of these sessions for the first time, this is our the next big trade session that we do every Thursday uh, for, with our clients. And uh, we basically will run through and uh, look at what trades are open in the market, anything that meets our trading systems, uh, and go through those, take any questions, and then just talk about any other sort of personal trades that we might be doing uh, that are lining up. Um, all right, so at the moment, Sim... GMG, IAG. I love how market is sort of close, so close uh, to being 52-week highs, and yet there's a lit short. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I mean, that's almost... that's it's almost two that's, lit shorts. Yeah. That's almost worth looking. Mm. Hang on. What? Really? Did I just... Oh, no. That, oh, yeah. It's Jesus. Simon Group. Mm. God, they're interesting. Just, so if you're looking at that for the first time, just go back to scans. I'm Sorry, yeah. I'm moving very quickly. Um, the, just like I like to move. Yeah. Um, so on this page here is anything that meets a breakout trade. So it's either breaking a 52-week high and then everything lines up or, or, or a low, right? So moment, where it's very rare that you would see the market of the, the XJO banging its head against the 52-week high and at the same time, you've got lit shorts presenting them on the exact mm. same day. So it just shows you a bit of dispersion in the market at the moment, um, which is something that we haven't seen that much of mm. uh, for some time. So things are having a mind of their own. Uh, I, the other, I, I the other... think having said that, sorry, you know, um, the, the drop-off in the stocks today was on a new report from China mm -hmm. about a massive spike in coronavirus. Yeah. So, uh, you know, IAG would, would probably be a kind of a reflection of, of that, which is... Yeah panic in insurance sector mm, mm. Um, and obviously yeah, they've so had the bushfires and so, so it was 45,000 cases or something like that jumped mm. up to 60,000 mm. um, you know it's not like it's an overnight thing we just yeah. know we know how China reports it's not yeah. that fast right yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah all right um, but I guess the other thing to say is when you're looking at the scans is there is lots of stuff approaching so XJO Woolworths well you can see the list there there's a there's a whole bunch of trades like that, 12. That, that, are, that are looking at moving out. So you'd really want to go through the scans uh, for breakouts and just be assessing those trades mm. uh, as to which ones have consolidated and are ready for the next move and which ones are, you know, just ongoing trades that we've been uh, been trading over the mm. last period. So there's a, there's a couple there that, that will have been on the consolidation side of it. Now, Ivan, you were going to click on which one? Uh, I a oh Simic. I was looking at Simic. I a G is interesting. So they were about to pay a dividend as well. So that's going to take them further down. Mm. Um, interesting to see from a from a ranking point of view. But anyway, 
kind of all long term investing kind of thing. Yeah. Which is something we never talk about. All right. So uh all right, so a lit short. Uh what do we put a uh so that it's 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 come off and uh it's now back. Mm. And interesting. Yeah. So uh yeah, if we were pricing up a lit short, say max loss five thousand, max profit nine thousand seven fifty. So the numbers work. Mm. Um uh, do you want just, to have it bring up a chart? Yeah, I just want to go I'm going to interactive chart. Um yeah, interesting. I mean the only thing is that that fifty day moving average is a bit far. Um be interesting to get a bit of consolidation in there and, and sort of do a lit short mm. with the almost the anticipation of a bounce, but at the moment, geez, it's 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 weak. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's an inter interesting one. So that line that lines up. Um, and but the point Ivan's making uh, is that uh, when we're trading uh, lit short, the uh, reversal trade on it is if it trades above the 50-day moving average, uh, and uh, that's quite a way away. So you know, if it goes against you, you you're uh, by the time you get to a reversal, uh, it could have cost you a fair bit of money. So mm. you'd have to trade it uh, with a, you know some confidence behind it, or maybe even think about another stop sort of situation mm. um, in, in the mix there. So anyway, that's Simic. Um, there have been any iron condors recently? Not really. Uh, uh, not, not last night. We've had a no. few come up. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, Tim didn't come up with a list since, you know, he's so busy being in Adelaide and relaxing. Yeah. yeah. What, yeah. What's he doing in Adelaide? Just sitting on a beach or something? I have no idea. <laughs> he's doing Adelaide. Drink wine. Oh, yeah. we've had an interesting trip to Adelaide. <laughs> okay. Let's not talk about that. Um, so, uh, it's just an investor roadshow. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, the all right. What do we got here? So, uh, we last week what we were t we looked at were the reporting season, and we talked about long straddles. And there are still a number of opportunities there. I'm not sure if Tim published that list. I might go back and check whether that list got mm. published. Um, let me write myself a note on that front. Um, but the, the long straddles is a really interesting one. I, I think the probably the one that I lines up, and I might go uh, back to strategy builder and just go to long straddle. Yep. Hang on. Wrong one. And I maybe go to the right stock. You know, I, I'm going to show you something, and this actually might be really useful for a lot of other people as well. Mm -hmm. But when you're on the chart. Yep. And you want to actually go and view that particular stock in the strategy builder. Yep. There's a little button over here, strategy builder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did. I did show this to you Hiding once. Hiding in plain sight. Yeah. But I think you were probably a little low on sleep. Yeah. So, okay. anyway. And it didn't work. And it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. All right. So. Damn you. Um, <laughs> I love it, love it. Um, all right. So uh, options cookbook, long straddle. Right now we're going to be running a session um, in uh, the date escapes me, um, but the next session, if you're in the masterclass, is going to be looking at long straddles, iron condors, and breakout trades. So Sweet. we're going to be going through and teaching you the rules behind how we trade those trades. So that basically gives you our favorite strategies for going long, for going short, uh, for trading a sideways or a consolidation or a drop in vol, uh, or trading off a pivot point or where you expect volatility to go up significantly, i.e. reporting periods and the likes. So that 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 gives, the, I mean, the way we look at the market, that covers basically every scenario that we trade, mm. and we're going to show you our rules, exactly how we do it. So if you're in the masterclass sort of booking, you've booked yourself already, you'll get to that. Otherwise, just go back to that page. It'll be in the morning report that goes out each day, uh, and there's been some emails that we've sent everyone on it as well. Or just say you're interested in the chat box? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. That, that requires Tim to actually look at it. Yeah. All right. So... Yeah. All right, so let's let's have a look at this. So, <clears throat> uh, where are we at? So it's saying seven twenty five, which has dropped off. Interesting. So volatility on this uh, has gone up. Right. Uh, this morning it was probably about where you wanted it, um, but I was too busy in meetings and so forth to trade it. Um, but uh, <laughs> maybe go one day, Sorry. Or three day. Yeah. So you see see that, see uh, what it's done there. Right. And that's interesting. So that sort of ten level is where you really want to, yeah, you know, your sweet spot. Yep. So uh, that was that was looking perfect. Um, I just uh, 
was busy doing other stuff. Mm. Um, and then from there, but all I want to occur is the move. The the matrix, we've still got to get this um, set up so that it's got the extra columns in it. So yeah. Look at over time. But it but, now does have volatility in it. I think two weeks ago we were looking at it. Yep. It didn't. So uh, we're looking for, I mean, really you're looking for a jump sort of here it's a 10 20 percent up vol move so 20 percent vol means that it goes from sort of 11 to 12 to sort of here ish mm -hmm. uh, so it's 20 percent of 11 percent yep right so just in terms of how i would trade this That's 13 the max loss is two grand so i, I know my numbers three three contracts um that's 13 that's my friends all right All right, so I would do three contracts, which is a max risk of $6,000. However, I'm only prepared to stay in the trade for a certain period of time. So if we go up here and say day 17, um, that's got volatility. Just double click that. Um, so day, I would not be prepared to stay in this trade for 17 days. I'd be saying I'm getting into a position because... Uh, it, we're at a pivot point. I'm expecting it will break through, did what it did last time, and mm. go up 100 points uh, or more. Uh, but I can make money if it goes up, say, 80 points, somewhere like that. I'd take a profit uh, or it'll go down. So maybe a coronavirus escalates or something uh, like that happens and the market tr comes off or volatility spikes. In those scenarios, that would be a, an exit or that some other event. And I'm certainly not wishing anything like that to happen. But that's sort of that, that, that I'd set the trade up from that perspective. So if you look at it from a, the, just on today's perspective, you can see that um, if it goes up, uh, you know, 100 points, I'm making money. 17 days from now, time decay is eaten into that. Mm. So I'd probably be trading it on around eight days from when I get in. Um, maybe giving myself up to 10 days for something significant to happen so that I can take a profit. If there's a move in the short term, I might take my profit and I'm not looking to make a massive profit out of the trade. So mm -hmm. you can see the max loss is $6,000, but equally, I'm not trading against a big move here. So my enemy is 100% time and volatility falling. Mm -hmm. So if I can get in when volatility is really at the bottom end, usually it reverts to the mean, so that would mean it would, at some point in time in that next eight days go up 20%. So that's a tick um, and it can't really, I can't really see it going down much mm. further than that. And I, so I just want to clarify when you say 20%, it's not going from 11 to 31, it's just saying 11 to 13. Yeah, just, just, yeah. yeah, yeah just so we, you know, just it's something that sort of comes up. That's, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So uh, it's a, it, a relatively, if you're just looking at that volatility, that's it, you know, a little spike occurring as, as happens, uh, you know, quite regular. A really good question from Adrian just there, which is, is there a reason why we're looking at the 7025 strike as opposed to the 7100? So when you go into the cookbook and you and you and you place the thing, uh, press the button. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually prices it off the futures. So while the spot, um, the XJO is 7100, uh, there's actually uh, 75 points worth of dividends that are coming out between now and March. So that's the cost of carry. So March and September are really the two months that you get that in the quarterlies. Um, and, you know, I don't obviously realize this, but just for the benefit of everyone. So the typical, so 70.25 is actually at the money at the moment yep. because as option traders, we don't get the dividends. Yep. So um, uh, the... The other thing I, I think that um, you would do, uh, Adrian, if you're seeing the trade up, is play around with the strikes. Mm. So, uh, you know, and what you might see in that uh, by looking at the payoff matrix is... Like if I move it up to 7050 or 71 or whatever it might be, it might give me a bias mm. on one end. And I don't mind there being a bias. I probably don't mind the way this is set up, though, to be honest, mm. at the moment. Because what will happen, what's most likely going to happen if the market comes off 100 points? Vol's going to go up. Vol's going to go yep. up, right? And so the, that on the downside, I'll get the benefit of vol. What's going to happen if it recovers? Now, I'm not mm. saying do this trade right now. It, it, it definitely was the ideal time, mm. and I've been talking about the setup the last two days. was this morning. I just missed it. Um, but I'd be waiting for, you know, if things consolidate, maybe mm. there's some more reporting about what happened, what, you know, the, and, and everyone goes, well, this is uh, this is actually just updating the last week. It's not, mm. hasn't jumped 15,000 overnight. Everything's mm. not so bad. You might see the market back up and mm. volatility come out. And then the trade presents itself. Yeah. So you, you play around with it. Yeah. The other thing that that's also you know when you start skewing your strike. So if you decided to do a seventy one hundred or sixty nine fifty or whatever, you know, the problem you've got is volatility actually gets a little bit more expensive for the individual strikes. 
so that's something important to consider. So if you're trading out the money, in this case, 7025, um, and by the way, you know, you can, you can see where the futures price is just by going, uh, you can go and create a new tab and you can type in XJO and you'll see this uh, over here in the top right hand corner. So if we go to the March 7031, you know, April, May, June uh, 1712. So you'll see that it, it sort of, it decays. Um, and then December, excuse me, December, you've got another, sorry, September, you've got another 80 points or so. So um, there's this continuous move towards um, uh, sort of the cost of carry uh, naturally in there. So that's how you find it. But if we go in and we decided to go in and adjust this to a 69.75, for example, you'll see that that individual vol gets more expensive because the cheapest options you will ever get are right at the money. There's the most amount of liquidity there and there's less risk of, it's just easier to, to, to hedge out for the market maker. So it'll always be the, the cheapest at that point in time. So you might as well just, uh, if you're doing a straddle, uh, the cheapest is always going to be at the strike, mm. at the money strikes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the other point I'd make is uh, I, 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 we showed the position with um, uh, three contracts, which is a 6,000 risk. When you're managing and thinking about, when I go into the trade, I'm actually not thinking about risking $6,000. If I'm buying a call option, I'm putting 6,000 down. I know that if mm. the market um, moves down very, very quickly, gaps mm. down overnight, I'm actually risking six grand, right? Whereas with this particular trade, if I set it up when vol's right at the bottom of the level and I'm prepared to close out of it after a couple of days, then the uh, my risk is time decay and a bit of vol coming out. So mm. I can play around and say, oh, what if vol drops 10% and what impact will time have? Uh, and so I've got 10 days and if in 10 days time I haven't done anything, I might be risking $1,500 or $1,000. Mm. Am I prepared to go into a trade where I could potentially make five or $6,000 more likely on a short-term move where nothing major happens, make um, 500, 600, and I'm risking 1,500. Mm. That's the kind of the, the math I do. And so, you know, I could be, you know, in the past I've had, you know, 20 or 30 or $40,000 on a, on, a, on a straddle like this, but I'm not thinking about, I'm, like, you know, I'm, I'm risking five grand or mm. whatever it might be based on time decay and based on mm. uh, that type of scenario. Although to do that, you also, um, you, the, the risk is doing something stupid. Uh, or not sticking to your rules, that risk mm. is uh, always there. Yep. Right. So yeah. uh, you know, don't don't go don't go too crazy. That's yeah. sort of where that's, <laughs> that's where sort of you know it's good to have sometimes brokers. Yeah. Um, to, to to be that sounding board because yeah. you know if you're at seventy twenty five day seventeen and you're you're down two grand. Yeah. Uh, there's a chance that you hold. Yeah. yeah. Going, it's gonna, well, but it's gonna come back. You, you want to have an advisor that is yeah. um, prepared to ask you a question like. Uh, didn't you say you were going to close out after this amount of times? Why are you holding? What has changed? Have you changed? You know, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you what's changed. I've lost money. What are you talking about? <laughs> I need to get I this back. Get, I need to get it back. The market owes me. <laughs> market owes me. <laughs> I've heard that one. I can't pay my mortgages. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but then if you were, you had a 20% vol, suddenly that, that shifts quite significantly. And that's where you start to see your, your uptick. So it, it's a vol trade. Um, yeah, it's. Yeah. It's a, it's a good one. It's a good one yeah. at that. Okay. So what does Ram said? Can you comment straddle strategy with an compliment? Ah. Compliment. Can you compliment straddle strategy with an iron condor to minimize risk? Uh, do you mean, I actually don't know the question. Yeah. Um, do you mean trade an iron condor on top of it? In which case you're probably just paying for four options when, you're really just a straddle is ultimately what you've got. Strangle, sorry. Uh, Ram, maybe, so maybe, can, maybe, maybe you can just... talk about, um, you know, uh, a way, for example, uh, if we, this is this strategy that we looked at last week where someone was trading, um, I think it was FMG, uh, they'd set the trade up on the basis that going into uh, earnings uh, or reporting season, sorry, the, 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 yeah. the, the, volatility would increase and also there would be a move one way or the other, mm. right? Uh, then their plan was, which they didn't do in the end, but their plan I believe was to, well, they would trade an iron condor after the fact. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so in other words, it's the, they get the vol spike and then, okay. Yeah. I don't think volatility misprices that, but mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. 
All right. Okay. Um, so, Ram, if you want to um, uh, sort of explain that a little anyway, bit more, yeah. we, can, we can have a go at um, going into more detail for you. Yeah, you, actually, you made me think yeah. for, for a lot. Uh, anyway, interesting, interesting point. Where's your screen? Just Up, down. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Apologies. Okay. So what do we got? Um, so at the moment, I think and that's basically where we're at. So right on this pivot point, ah, if it breaks out, so probably the, a good thing to have a look at is a chart of the XGO and just have a look at uh, what would be the move. Because last time there was a breakout, the ADX was too low for us to trade it. But I believe ADX is up around 22, 23 at the moment, last time I looked. Um, let's have a look. Not quite. No. So last time you looked was middle of February. No. <laughs> I thought I looked at it last night. Anyway, so it's sitting on 20 at the moment. Yeah. Um, we, we did actually look at it last night. Yeah. So the, here we go. Um, okay. So a, a, a bit more consolidation mm. before a move would probably line this up. ADX may give way on us, though, mm. because the consolidation generally sees mm. it pull off a little bit. Um, it does look bullish, though. Yeah, it does look bullish. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's that, you know, that bum, bum, bum yeah. move. Um, and it's interesting. The only thing is, is uh, typically virus fears cause downturns in the market. Obviously, you've had first-hand experience from your friend who you were saying that, you know, he's lost a lot of bookings yep. uh, on the back of that. So, obviously, tourism is going to take a hit, which is mm -hmm. going to, you know, it is going to hit the economy at some point in time if it continues. Yep. Stock market's rejecting that at the moment. Well, yeah, well, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine who owns a hotel and uh, they went from 100% occupancy to 65% occupancy overnight. So, their, their expected bookings or their bookings actually just dropped off on lost trade from mm -hmm. China. Uh, they they've been talking to uh, some of their corporate clients who are not only not tra traveling in they're obviously not tra traveling in China they're not traveling in Asia and they've actually cut back some big companies listed big organizations mm. that we would know the names of have actually said we're not tra we're not traveling in Australia either mm. right and which has got to have big impacts if you've got you know uh, another friend of mine who in uh, Manufacturers in China, um, they can't actually take delivery of any any of the stuff that's just sitting on the docks waiting to uh, get shipped over. So mm. all of that's got to flow through and have an impact, the education sector and so forth. Not that we are trying to predict fundamental information for our trades. Uh, so uh, we probably should stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, another thing is, is this. it's just, it it's so frustrating on some level because, you know, we've been talking about, these breakouts and you know at the start when we when we just had those breakouts you know we we comfortably went into lit longs because the whole market was following and it was coming from the big end of town you know you do expect on a day like today um or where we've been over the last week you do expect to have these lit longs because if you think about it this is like a summary of the top 75 stocks in, in the market um you do expect lit longs not only just to be approaching but through it and in particular around banks. And I've spoken about this a fair bit, but you know, you do expect your ANZs and your ASXs to be leading the rally, right? They're, they're the, big, the big guys that do it. But you look at all the big companies, they're sitting there, I mean, you know, there's, there's another bank closer to, to a lit short than anything else. Uh, and in a tight range, uh, you know, flight center crown, you start going through across that sample of sectors and they're all uh, quite low. Macquarie's in a lit long, it's just in an awkward time. Um, you know, so obviously that that'll that'll pop up a little bit later. Uh, ADX was is the is the thing that's making that fall behind. But overall, you you go through this list and there's a lot more like you know there's a lot more in the lower part of that half in the in the kind of in the 52 week low area as opposed to this. This is probably to me this is the most in, in, this is the way that I like to see the market and and get that confirmation and. You know, if if the case wasn't that, and we had a, you know, this was like a Christmas tree at light up, you, you know, I think you're crazy for doing a straddle. Mm -hmm. But in light of the fact that we're we're sort of we're nowhere, um, your straddle is right. I mean, either there's going to be some weak buying from the from the lower end, which will mean that your call is going to be the one that's, that's going to do well, or your ideal scenario for your trade is a short term sell off, um, and then 
you get a vol spike and then uh you know and then and then you're doing well yeah yeah absolutely um all right uh i'm, I'm just going through also, look at this, this particular one here that's um a bit aggressive on the move up <laughs> uh we've missed that one uh for now but um well the lit longs today so yeah uh it's more than again the matter is uh firstly the 50 day moving average is actually below the 200 day moving average mm. first point see that right there mm. uh second of all uh it's uh where's the adx actually the adx is up but so that's one confirmation point yeah. vols okay hopefully it would have been a bit higher but yeah uh you'd, you'd want that to that that 50 day moving average to come over in a bit of consolidation and next breakout you'll you'd be on it Cool. Um, guys, any questions from the last week? Um, we were gonna, we were just gonna look at the straddle today. That was sort of our big thing, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, any questions? Any trades you want us to look at? Um, let us know. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's trades out there. They'll pop up. You probably want to trade off periods of consolidation in this market. I'd say on the breakout trades. Mm. Um, there are certainly, if you go back to the reporting, uh, going to be some good straddle opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I'd be looking at that. Um, XJO, I think there's been numerous um, opportunities, uh, opportunities yeah. there. Um, I think there was a missed one this morning uh, for me, but um, you know there were plenty there. Uh, Iron Condor was implied vol, <laughs> vols pretty low, so there's been mm -hmm. a couple that have come up. Um, but again, they'll, they'll, you know, you're not going to have like 10 running at mm. once in the current market. There'll be just the odd one here and there. So mm. there's trades. It's definitely a good time. There's movement. Um, CBA, hey? So someone's asked us. Tr yeah. Trudy. Hello, Trudy. Which, um, what exactly do you want us to talk about the Trudy? Um, yeah, generally, obviously, um, I had some, some good uh, news out um, from their uh, reports, earnings. Yeah. Um, they also released all their Basel three stuff, which is um, they're just obligated to report on their liquidity capital adequacy, and that was all sort of fine. Um, so, as a result, someone decided to take it through the high. This has been a um, so there would be people that would be in the uh, that will have done very well out of this because there mm. has, this has been. And I'm not sure if you're in this uh, Trudy or has ADX been too low? Maybe where are we at? No, it's been fine. So there. There have been some um, uh, lit longs that have come up on this. Uh, so there would be some people that um, would have done very well overnight mm. off that move. Um, but getting into the trade now is, like, you know, obviously it's positioned for a lit long, but you're just too far away to six, yeah, yeah, six bucks. average. Hey? Six bucks, so it's like an 8% move or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, so you, you, I mean that that and the interesting thing about that is, I mean, again, the 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 move that it is, and it's also it's a bank, so that doesn't help. But if you um, if you did get into let's let's ignore the fact that this is a a, a bank, and and you did get into the stock, and the stock was saying, okay, well, um, I, I feel like there's some serious growth here, and it's done something like this. Um, that's actually more, by the way, of a setup for our are in condors as opposed to anything else because it typically consolidates after these kind of moves. But if you you said, look, I've got a bullish view, um, you'd probably change your stop to something a lot closer. Because if you're sitting there and your stop is below here, you might you might get long here. It might go down sort of into this 86 range. You're not technically completely wrong, um, but you, you still lose money on that. The other alternative is if you, if you want to make the view that it's not going to go below 80 five or 86 or something uh over a period of time uh you can again i mean there's a strategy for that as well right you can sell a let's say it's 86 that you think you can sell an 86 uh put uh buy an 85 put maybe just to protect yourself in case it goes completely off and that's actually you know i think that's probably a trade worth looking at the risk reward isn't going to be awesome that time it worked see that you just yeah <laughs> um but uh, you know, and again, it's a it's a bull put. But this time around, we're going to do it as an out of the money. So you, again, we'll just do the same thing: forty two days, um, and then you just adjust this to eighty six level. Uh, I think eighty six and eighty five is the numbers we said. Eighty six and one, maybe just to be safe. Um, you know, do the say uh, say what do we got? I don't know, twenty lots, thirty lots, something like that. 
1800 bucks, 1000 bucks. So as long as it doesn't go below uh, $86, you'll be fine. Again, keep in mind, there's a $2 dividend coming out in six days. Uh, so again, you've got to watch for that. Um, but if, if your view is subject to anything else, that, that would be the way. Yep. Um, I'll just be, we um, invited people from the Options Masterclass, anyone who's new on the session who doesn't have access to the platform at the moment, you can press type in yes and we'll get you set up to have a trial of it so that you can start practicing using it while we're going through this uh, education series um, and also go to optionsgame.com.au if you haven't registered for the options game as well. That's a really good way of practicing uh, options trading that is available to everyone at the moment. So uh, with that, if there's any other questions, anything else you'd like us to go through, let us know. Otherwise, we'll call the session to a halt. Uh, there are some more sessions being run. I think the next next catch up is Tim's going to run a 10.30 Monday morning trade the bell. Uh, and so that should be interesting at what's, you know, looking at what's happened over the, you know, around the world over the weekend and trades for the, for the week ahead uh, that are lining up. Uh, so that's Monday, 10.30. Uh, make sure you get along to that or, or uh, there'll be some more education stuff happening next week. So, all right, guys, uh, again, if you, uh, for those of you that have typed in yes, we'll get that, get you set up for that trial. Otherwise, um, type it in now. And for everyone else, uh, great to have you back online. We will see you be talking to you next week. Thank you.